I want to call to order the regular meeting of the Bowling Green Board of Commissioners for February 19th, 2013. Uh, I would invite you to stand with us if you'd uh, like to. Pastor Lance Parrott from Christ Fellowship Church will be here to provide the invocation for us. Pastor Parrott, thank you, sir. Let's pray. Father, we thank you, uh, Father, that you brought us together tonight. Lord, we thank you. And we know it's only by your grace uh, that these people uh, have these positions and that we can gather together. Lord, we thank you for the city commissioners and the mayor. Lord, we thank you for the citizens that are here. Lord, we just pray that tonight you would give us uh, wisdom to make uh, wise decisions, uh, discernment, Father, to know what's the best decisions for the city. Lord, we pray there be a spirit of love and unity, uh, not a spirit of divisiveness, but, Father, a spirit that, that glorifies you by us uh, being unified in this room. And, Lord, uh, most of all, we pray, Lord, that you would bless this city. Um, Lord, this city would be made up of people that worship and honor you. And, Lord, that even everything that takes place here tonight would bring you glory. Uh, we pray this all in Christ's name. Amen. 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 Thank you. I uh, invite you to join us as Commissioner Hill leads us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. One nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Ms. Schaller. Please call the roll. Commissioner Waltrip? Here. Commissioner Williams? Here. Commissioner Denny? Here. Commissioner Hill? Here. Mayor Wilkerson? Here. And just as a reminder uh, for the invocation, if there's someone in the audience or at home that would like to provide an invocation, please feel free to contact the clerk's office and we'll put you on the list to, to do that. Uh, the first item that we have are awards and recognitions. And uh, uh, Mayor, yes, I, I, I have uh, three young students here from Western Kentucky University. I don't know what high school they went to, but I don't think there are any in Bowling Green. We have Amy Sturzel, who I know is from Louisville. Uh, Amy? And then I have a, a Lauren Young from Lexington, right? And an Eric Wills from Nashville. They're here, and you find this fascinating, to watch your group dynamic. And they have to write a paper on it. So really? they'll, be, they'll be watching you to see. Whose class are they in? Well, yeah. I was going to ask. Amy that. was in my class, and her brother was my son Spike's uh, roommate and friend, right? Yeah, so. The other two were not in my class, but they uh, asked to come because they wanted to see a, a dynamic group, so I thought you would be a good candidate. Dynamic. No, no doubt about it. <laughs> Do we get to read the papers afterwards? No. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> but we want to welcome them. You know. Thank you for coming. Glad that you're here. Uh, we do have a couple of uh, recognitions or awards that we'd like to mention, and I'll invite uh, uh, FBI Special Agent Brian Underwood to come to the microphone. I think he has something uh, first that he'd like to do for us. Hopefully for us and not to us. Good evening. I'm uh, Brian Underwood, an Assistant Special Agent in charge of the FBI's Louisville Division. Um, which has uh, responsibility for operations um, throughout the Commonwealth, including obviously our local office here in Bowling Green. I'm very grateful, Mr. Mayor and other commissioners, for the opportunity to be here and uh, pay tribute to your uh, local police department. I have a, a couple of um, certificates of appreciation signed by uh, my director, uh, Bob Muller. Uh, before I do that, I'd like to just say a couple of words about the significance of the case that the Bowling Green Police Department contributed to, as well as uh, the significance of their specific contributions, if I may. Yes, sir. I understand you have a pretty ambitious agenda, so I'll, I'll try to be measured uh, in my remarks. But um, so going back um, in early 2010, the FBI received information about two individuals that were residents of Bowling Green at the time, uh, Wad Alwan and Mohanad Hamadi, um, and because of the nature of the information, we, we were very concerned. Um, fortunately, we have a very uh, seamless partnership with your police department. Um, a couple of things contribute to that. Both Chief Doug Hawkins and Captain Brian Harrell have uh, top secret security clearances. Uh, 
Captain Harrell also is a, a member and participant on the FBI's Joint Terrorism Task Force. So we were able to uh, take that information and share with them almost real time uh, our concerns and plot out a way forward. Fast forwarding over the next year to year and a half, uh, Sergeant Harrell at the time, along with several other state and local officers on the Joint Terrorism Task Force and FBI agents on the uh, Terrorism Task Force put together a very tight and comprehensive case on these two subjects. Uh, the case documented evidence that these two individuals had participated as al-Qaeda fighters in Iraq and had perpetrated acts of violence against U.S. troops. It also documented evidence that uh, both of these individuals uh, continued to seek to pursue ways to support uh, al-Qaeda fighters against U.S. troops, even from here in Bowling Green in the way of funding and sending weapons and, and arms overseas. Uh, to support uh, al-Qaeda efforts. Um, the case was successful, resulted in convictions uh, a little over a year ago. Both subjects pled guilty. That in and of itself is significant because it represents the first and still to this day only um, al-Qaeda and Iraq convictions in the U.S. court system. Um, fast forwarding to approximately two weeks ago, uh, Wad Alwan I was sentenced to 40 years in prison. Uh, Mohanad Hamadi was sentenced to life in prison. And um, you know, effectively, even Alwan's sentence is a life sentence given his age and the fact that there's no parole in the federal system. So with, with that, about the significance of the case, just a couple of words about the significance of, of uh, the police department here's contributions. First of all, uh, to, uh, to Brian, uh, Captain Harrell, your, uh, where are you? There you are. Captain Harrell's um, experience in Iraq as an Army reservist serving with the Army CID um, proved to be uh, invaluable. His knowledge of the history of the events in Iraq, uh, the history of the culture, uh, also his involvement in the day to day operations of the surveillances of these subjects spanning almost a year and a half, and his involvement in the sting operations involving both of these subjects uh, was exceptional. So he is to be commended. His skill and professionalism are outstanding, and I personally value the opportunity for our agents to continue to work with officers like Mr. Harrell. Uh, with respect to um, Chief Hawkins, uh, again, from from the first day when we called up and said, hey, Chief, we think we need to have a chat, um, his support was unbelievable. Um, and I'm, I go back specifically thinking about the days leading up to the arrest. Doug, I, I know you know what our space looks like in, in Bowling Green, but for those of you that don't know, the FBI space will sit about six people comfortably. And we were thinking forward to what if these individuals agree to cooperate and be interviewed. We knew that because of where they had been, what they had done, and who they knew, there would be interest from not just all over the FBI, but all over the entire United States intelligence community. And um, Chief Hawkins uh, very smoothly and quietly made available to us almost an entire wing of his police department facility. And uh, because of that, we were able to very uh, effectively and efficiently carry out what was, for lack of a better word, an, an international uh, uh, intelligence operation for the course of about a week, right out of the Bowling Green PD, very quietly and very successfully. So I, I can't say enough about the value of uh, the Bowling Green PD's partnership. And um, having said all that, these pieces of paper seem somewhat inadequate, but I guess um, the taxpayer can feel good in the fact that we aren't lavishly throwing around money on fancy plaques. So I, I have uh, Doug, with you and Brian. Can I go back and take pictures? 
this says Sergeant Harold because you were a sergeant when this was going on, but um, is signed by Bob Mueller for your superb cooperation with the FBI in combating in international terrorism. Thank you. Thank you very much. And then, Doug, this is to you and, and for the entire Bowling Green Police Department. Um, signed again by Bob Mueller for your superb cooperation with the FBI combating international terrorism. Thank you very much. Thank you. We're, we're, we really appreciate it, Mr. Underwood. If you wouldn't mind stepping back up, I think. Uh, one of us is going to slip out there and take a picture of you tonight before you, before you get away, if that's all right. While they're taking that picture, I'll read to the, uh, uh, and we do want to acknowledge the cooperation and the efforts of the FBI and the Bowling Green Police Department in helping thwart, uh, it's hard to say, international terrorism from Bowling Green, Kentucky. So uh, thank you very much for that. And while they're, uh, again, taking photographs, on the 15th of this month, the Bowling Green Police Department handed out their employee awards. And, and in addition to acknowledging the years of service and the promotions over the past year, they did hand out uh, awards uh, that I'd like to call to your attention. The DUI award went to Officer Ed Pulley. The Bill Key Traffic Enforcement Award went to Hani Elobishi. The Seat Belt Award went to Michael uh, Yonker. The Child Restraint Award went to Officer Michael Rexrote. The Character Counts uh, Award went to uh, Alan uh, Cassida. Is that right, Cassida? Cassida. The Civilian of the War, uh, Year Award went to Adam Smith, and the Officer of the Year went to Officer Ryan Dillon, who was, I, th I think, actually interviewed on the BKO. We had three life-saving medals handed out, Officer Michael Kiefer, who we saw earlier today, Officer David Grimsley, and Officer Eric Houchins. We really appreciate uh, those and acknowledge all of their efforts uh, in making Bowling Green a much better place to live. Thank you all for coming. And remind me who we've got back there. I don't see him enough. Dick Glenn, Special Agent, and where are we at? I forget the name over here. Sean Creed. Sean Creed. Thank you so much for coming. And Mrs. Hawkins is here tonight, too. Thank you. Uh, are there any other awards or recognitions we need to bring up? No, Mayor. All right. Uh, do you have any comments for us? Yeah, uh, one short comment. Uh, as Doug Gorman intimated, uh, we're having some difficulty ourselves collecting uh, accurate information on the, the TIF uh, area activities. So Jeff has asked me to ask you to pull item 7 so we could aggregate more accurate data, if that would be OK. I don't, I don't think we need to vote on it. We'll just okay. pull it from the agenda. Yeah, I'm going to pull it from that. That's it. All right. Thank you. All right. We'll have the approval of the minutes from the regular meeting on February 5th, 2013. So moved. Motion by Hill. Okay. Second by Waltrip. Any discussion? Please call the roll. Thank you again for coming. Please call the roll. Waltrip? Yes. Williams? Yes. Denning? Yes. Hill? Yes. Wilkerson? Yes. This is the portion of the agenda where we make the microphone available if anybody has any uh, public comments they'd like to make to the city that's on an item that is not on tonight's agenda. We offer that opportunity now. If there's anybody that'd like to, who please raise your hand. Seeing no one, will continue. The first item is the second reading of ordinance number 2013, number two. Ordinance relating to cable television franchise, an ordinance of the City of Bowling Green section of the Bowling Green Warren County Cable Franchise Authority, approving extension of non-exclusive cable franchise agreement with Insight Kentucky Partners 2 LP. So moved. Second. Motion by Waltrip and second by Hill. Is there any discussion? Just as a reminder to the public, the city doesn't control the uh, all but just a very few, the rates of very few on the basic uh, program. It's non-exclusive. Anybody that wants to open a cable franchise can come into Bowling Green to do it. What's the other one? Very good short summer. Okay. All right. Please call the roll. Waltrip? Yes. Williams? I have to abstain at this time due to a potential conflict of interest. Denning? Yes. Hill? Yes. Wilkerson? Yes. Second reading of Ordinance 2013, number three. 
Ordinance relating to budget amendment, ordinance approving amendment number two to the City of Bowling Green, Kentucky annual operating budget for fiscal year 2013. So um, moved. Second. Motion by Hill and second by Denning. Any discussion? Please call the roll. Waltrip? Yes. Williams? Yes. Denning? Yes. Hill? Yes. Wilkerson? <clears throat> yes. Municipal order 2013-28. Municipal order authorizing and accepting bid number 2013-13 for fiscal year 2012 sidewalk construction program phase one from Scott and Murphy Incorporated at Bowling Green, Kentucky in the total amount of $119,707. So moved. Motion by Walter. Second. Second by Hill. Mr. DeFebo. One of our uh, capital goals every year is to do a stormwater improvements and sidewalk improvements. Uh, Again, this year we have in our budget uh, a plan to uh, improve uh, sidewalks, uh, approximately 1,800 feet of sidewalk and uh, about seven uh, ADA compliant uh, handicap ramps uh, throughout the city. Uh, we have a protocol selection that has been developed and approved by the commission years ago. We also uh, make an effort to uh, notify uh, the residents that could be affected in these particular areas using both Jeff's and uh, Karen Foley's uh, capabilities. We went out to bid. We had five bidders. The lowest bidder uh, was Mike Murphy, and uh, we recommend uh, approval of this bid. All right, I think we have some discussion about that. Who wants to go first? Can I? Yes, sir. Ask a couple of words. Um, what was our procedure in notifying uh, the residents? Because as I look at a document here, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine residents, no, yeah, nine residents were not notified. Okay, um, we've, we've done this over the four or five, six years we've been doing this program where we've developed a system where we take the candidate projects to the city commission. Uh, this project in particular uh, was brought before the city commission on the 1st of November of 2011. Uh, what we do then, we give the commission the sidewalks that we're recommending. We get uh, consensus to go ahead. Uh, we'll do a conceptual design. And then, as part of our policy, we conduct a public meeting um, for all the projects. And in fact, I just came from one a little earlier today on some of the next round of projects. Um, this meeting, uh, I talked to Karen shortly, uh, a little bit ago, and she was out of the office. But um, we conducted a meeting at Parks, Parks and Rec. I don't have the exact date. Um, we had sent out notification to residents. Uh, our procedure is to mail a notification out to people on their side of the street, but we also send to the opposite side <coughs> of the street as well. Uh, talk with Karen and she confirmed that uh, that did take place. Uh, we also notified the Homeowners Association and um, uh, we did conduct the meeting and um, um, we, uh, our records, uh, Karen, indicated that we didn't have any attendance from steeplechips um, at that meeting. Um, who did attend? Uh, I'd have to... No, no, I'm, I'm, I'm not requesting names as much as I am. Do you remem remember uh, what area other than steeplechase may have attended? Yes, we had... Um, we had Steeplechase, Holly Drive, and Ogden. Uh, that's what the projects that Karen remembered uh, that were presented at that public meeting. And Ogden. Ogden Drive. Ogden. Uh, now, so this was more than one project being presented? We, when we can, we group those together, such as the meeting we conducted tonight. We had uh, two or three sidewalk projects. We also had drainage projects where we were, um, um, had notified residents and um, 
had people come in. We're available to talk to the people uh, throughout the process. So this uh, project, Steeplechase project, or Steeplechase Way, it borders on the backside, I guess that is Briarwood, because Ironwood Drive comes through there. Is that correct? That's correct. And um, the way we select these projects, uh, the policy approved by the commission, um, location is a major consideration. Um, uh, what we're looking at with location is proximity to schools, uh, parks, or commercial centers. Uh, we also look at financial aspects of the project. With that measure, we're looking at external money that might come in to help pull with our funds to uh, build these projects. Uh, we look at what we call technical feasibility where how hard is it to build this project? Do we have to move a lot of utilities, this, that, whatever? Uh, we also look at connectivity, which is uh, our thought here is if we can build a small section of the sidewalk and open it up, instead of just extending the sidewalk that may not connect to something, if we can fill in gaps, that opens up the, the network even more. So uh, those re receive higher scoring. And uh, last is walkability. Uh, what we're looking at there is uh, if we got people walking alongside a Nashville Road or a Russell Road, we're wanting to get them on a sidewalk as opposed to a cul-de-sac. Uh, but our uh, evaluation considers any street in between that as well. In all fairness to you, have you seen this document that was presented to I us? I have not. No, sir. You can have my copy. I'll look at Melinda's. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, sir. I'm finishing. Thank you, Jeff. I appreciate this. And I'll have to say I seconded this motion just so we could bring it up for discussion. I have to say this is the first time in my time on the commission I've seen opposition to a sidewalk project, mm -hmm. which concerns me when I receive so many calls of people begging for sidewalks. Yes, ma'am. So it's going to be real hard for me to support this project as it is when so many people, thanks to the neighborhood group, have said they don't want this. I would much rather see the city's money go to a sidewalk where the residents want it. Okay. That's it. Any other comments, questions? It, it, on your notifications, I mean, is it usual that these meetings that you would have are a, a year or so before the project would actually come to fruition? Is that generally the case? It's, um, the, that possibility exists. And uh, we're, as we're going into design, we're taking several of these out to the public. We start to the end of the design, and then we put them out in phases to go ahead and get those uh, projects out on the street. Um, that that uh, might be the issue here. I don't have the exact date when we had the meeting, but it would have been after the, uh, uh, when we bought the um, recommendations to uh, City Commission, November 1st of 2011. Yeah, I think you mentioned 2011. 2011 yes. So, you know, I know lots of times I receive things in the mail, and if it's way in advance, I mm -hmm. may forget that I got it. Uh, un un understand. Some so. of that can be because of my age, but. Uh, and, and again, we, the meeting occurred shortly after. Now, the, the construction portion of that uh, could have lagged. Yes, sir. Do these other other streets in this area, are, are the sidewalks already there? Or are you trying to connect some sidewalks? We're trying to connect uh, Lover's Lane, the sidewalk there, and uh, sidewalks on Ironwood. So uh, again, when we were looking at the scoring, uh, the connectivity played into this. Uh, the location score, the proximity to the school, uh, had a, um, a significant weight. Uh, the uh, construction is not that difficult, and uh, the, those factors all came together uh, to develop those scores. Uh, we do that uh, across the board. We're looking at all, all these locations, and uh, we've got to have a common yardstick to measure uh, project uh, priority over one. 
Well, I noticed from this picture here, it appears that uh, even without the sidewalk, if you go in off, there's a, there's a section there of ironwood that kind of cuts into the back part of that school. So, uh, you know, yes. I don't know. I don't know if a if a sidewalk running down Steeplechase Way all the way to Lovers Lane is is actually overkill or not. Uh, and again, we, when we were looking at it, and based on the policy we have, um, we that is we're filling in a gap. We're, we're connecting two sidewalks together. I understand. I need to address one issue briefly. Um, I'm not sure we're expecting issues tonight, so I'm going to tell you, we've already begun acquisition and we may have already done some closings. I don't, I don't have numbers here in front of me tonight. I'm not sure what all we've done, but we've already started acquisition for the sidewalk. Acquisition of what? That we didn't have it right away to begin with? Uh, well, we needed, well, don't forget we have two policies. Most time for sidewalks, a couple of places we have a need for permanent easements to actually put the sidewalk where it goes. Sometimes we have need for temporary easements, particularly to tie the sidewalk into driveways. Uh, but our main policy nowadays is the policy where we actually compensate people for uh, their personal property that's in the right away. Uh, trees, bushes, mailboxes. Uh, so we've already sent letters out and started acquisition. Could we I just can't, can't tell you tonight what all we've, well, I mean, I just don't have in front of me what all we've done. Could we get a list of that before we approve this? Well, I think my understanding the sidewalk was actually part of the sidewalk program last time. Most of the time, I think you want acquisition before you approve the construction because you don't want to hold a contractor back while you're waiting to acquire the, uh, the sidewalk. By the time you do the construction, I think most of the time you want most of the acquisition to already take place. I'm sorry, do you have a question? Well, just suggest, how would this have been impacted had you had uh, this number of neighbors been against this project? Um, Again, we, had you known that at the meeting? Well, the very easily. You know, the, the purpose of the public meeting is to gauge um, opposition right. or, or people for the project. Um, there is one project in the past that we did not do, um, gauged to, uh, based on opposition, and that was Long Wilkerson Trace. Um, well, um, Long Wilkerson Trace, the left side when you're going toward Bent Tree. Mm -hmm. so. Would it be appropriate to amend this, take this out, and get back for further evaluation what, and what, not hold up the other part? Or what does that do to this? Do we know how much this bid is for this part of this project? We don't. Uh, we can back that out. Um, this bid includes all three projects. Um, we can sequence this so we start on the other projects. Um, I was trying to think of a way that we didn't hold up the others while we, because there seems to be enough issues here not to move forward with this yeah. tonight. So. But I'm not sure we know tonight how to amend it for the right amount of money. I mean, this is actually the, act, the construction um, bid here we're talking about. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure we're going to be able to do this without rebidding. I'm, I'll leave it up to Jeff. I'm not sure how you're going to be able to take out. Well, again, we're, we're paying for quantities that go in place. So I'm, it, I'm like Melinda. I just, I, it is really hard to vote for a project when there's so many, when, when there are people that are against it and you're getting calls from other streets in town that are begging for, yeah. for sidewalks. And, uh, you know, again, when we're looking at this, we're looking at a, a policy, we're looking at, uh, ways we can fill that in uh, the school and the proximity of the school was Absolutely. one of the major factors uh, in this. So. Can I ask one quick question first? Um, does, is it, who is it's getting it again? I'm, I'm sorry. Is, is Murph, does he care where the sidewalk is as long as it's the same distance? Does it make any difference to me? We pay him on quantities, so square okay. yards of sidewalk yeah. that goes in. Okay. Uh, but I still wonder whether this he, bid was based he's on lose what number of feet. That's what I mean. That's he's going to lose this, though, out of the total package. Well, what I'm thinking is that there, I'm sure there's a distance, maybe Mr. DeFello can address this. I'm sure there's a distance that we can change. Yeah, just move it to a different location. I'm, sorry, I, I'm trying to clarify the letter here, which staff didn't receive. I only see four against on here. And you have neutral, 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 could not reach, could not reach. Are those assumed to be no's? This is now could not reach. Uh, 
I, I counted some those. Updates. There's been some updates on this one that uh, I have. Just uh, by way, just for your information, we always receive opposition to sidewalks. As Bruce and Bill and others would know, that we always have received some opposition on the sidewalk somewhere. One resident may not like the route, or a, a, mm. it's natural to our process. And we're pretty good at adjusting, moving stuff, and trying to make this work. So we we've dealt with some 15, 15 or 20 sidewalk projects. Uh, we're pretty good at getting creative and finding a way to uh, meet a pedestrian need and uh, do the best we can. My issue. Let's not make a decision on this tonight was really to address what Kevin said is to make sure that we're not uh, with all due respect overreacting to something let you know, host another meeting and see what the, and what the uh, what the neighbors say instead of just saying no tonight go back and I mean just talking about time on this one doesn't seem to be because I think we've, like I said, the acquisition letters we've sent out, unless I, because uh, my paralegal does most, I'll be honest with you, she does most of it, but uh, I, I'm, the only one I'm aware of, we've had one person that's voiced uh, concern about the sidewalk. I don't think we've heard anything negative from anybody else that we've sent letters out to. Did they get a letter at the beginning or at what you're talking well, about now? Yeah, we're not, we're not part of participation for them when they do their advance. What we get is once the sidewalk is designed, then they go out and they, they, they determine how much permanent easement we need, temporary easement we need. They identify the personal property that's in the right of way. Uh, so then they bring that to us. We draft the agreements, we draft the easements. Then we send the letters out to everybody saying, here's, here's our offer to you. If you've got any questions about it, give us a call. I know from time to time, uh, I know one of these property owners, I think a couple of people went out and met personally with them uh, a few days ago. And I you know, met with them on site, and we've done that a number of times too. But, you know, the letters that come from me are basically just acquisition letters that, you know, Public Works gives us um, basically the price, what they need, and we just, you know, we're responsible for acquiring the property. And I, I'm only aware of one in this project that's voice concerned. Was the one, one of the two seated here? Uh, I'm not real sure. I don't know who's sitting here. <laughs> uh, is it okay if I say yes? Yes. Sir. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I have not met Ms. Freeman, but I know she's been in contact with my office. Well, just to follow up on the mayor's question, if this project is not approved, then what does that do for the contract? Well, there, there's two, there's several ways we could do this. Um, we could award the project and hold on to that, the steeplechase project until further discussion takes place, if that's the will of the commission. Uh, what that would do, we could go ahead and have uh, the contractor start on uh, projects that are free and clear, and uh, that way we, we keep constructing. Um, in the meantime, if uh, there needs to be further discussion on this, we'll, we'll be glad to do that. But the contractor's going to lose 119000 No, sir. Um, we would still do two projects, and then, you know, if um, if this project doesn't go, it would be less this project, or unless we uh, put a Substitute. project from next year on, uh, would be a possibility as well. So uh, the contractor won't be out anything that they, any work <coughs> they do, they'll be paid for. So, just by way of clarification, we use the science that that you all approved. Uh, then we come to you and get your approval before we do anything. So both of those things were done. Then we have to go out and attain the legal right-of-ways and do the bidding process. So once you kind of approve the streets, we're moving forward. And Jeff and uh, Karen do the extra step of notifying people. You, you received any uh, negative comments from the notification you, you sent? The, the only one I'm aware of is uh, uh, Ms. Freeman. You know, I understand that. Okay. As long, you know, we want to make sure people are aware of what's going to happen to their property, and if they get the notification or didn't before something happens, as long well, as we talk to them. And, and that's why we have a piece of paper. We we encourage people to come in. And again, like I said, we we did one of these earlier tonight. We had several projects, and um, you know, we we sit down. We talk about 
pros and cons and can we slide this this way or that way and uh, I also make sure I, I, I wish I had numbers and Jeff might be able to help me but you know most of the time we're talking sidewalks most of the time we're doing it in the right way um, it's a couple one or two on steeplechase I think we had permanent easements small permanent easements uh, and again a temporary to tie in the driveways but I, I don't 80, have a specific number but the vast majority would be on yeah, probably 89 percent of the sidewalks in the right away Yes, sir. Maybe Bill brought up a good idea. Maybe there's a, an option for us to be more thoroughly meet with the neighbors, see if we can reach a compromise and just put this in the band to move forward on bifurcate the bid and move forward on the other part and try to work out. And Karen's really good with trying to accommodate people, and I, I think we should give her a shot at it. So voting to approve the, the, or, the municipal order tonight would you would be taking direction that you do the to two projects and set the third one aside and Correct. Tell, we get yeah. things. That's we could right. award for the whole amount and hold the steeplechase chase project until further discussion has taken place. If that's okay. not good, we can find, as uh, Linda suggests or you suggest, some other place to spend the money. There's a lot of, yeah, lot of places a, that want them. This had value because sure. there's a school there. There's, uh, as the residents know, it's a high traffic speeding area. Uh, there's a small section that would complete it, right? But there are some complications that are legitimate. Some of these driveways are uh, aggregate stone, They're correct? Exposed There's some large trees, uh, and, and the yards are generally small. Uh, I, yeah. Just as a matter of question, I had, if they have an aggregate driveway, we don't cut across the driveway. We stop and go across No, we were, we were going to stop at the drive and preserve the aggregate drive right. and, and fill in sidewalk between. Uh, we had some consult. We uh, consultation with the um, city of Nashville regarding ADA requirements and to make sure that if we did have an aggregate drive in the middle of a concrete section that that didn't create any kind of ADA problem or anything like that. And that's acceptable uh, uh, based on their research of ADA. I've been looking at Ms. Freeman and Mr. Graff and I think they're comfortable with moving in that direction as well. And the, They're representing the Steeplechase Homeowners Association. so. If you give us a shot and meet with them and try to find an accommodation, okay. then so maybe it's possible. What are we, I'm trying to figure what we're, are we still going to award it for the full 119, just take the steeplechase part of it out? We'll build it somewhere. If not we'll hold that in abeyance. We'll, we'll find that footage it. somewhere else. Yeah. Okay. And we can vote on this as it's written, and we know that steeplechase is not going to be built until we say build it. Why don't we do an official amendment to eliminate That's the steeplechase be project? Because this is actually based on that steeplechase footage, though. I know it's a, I mean, this doesn't say it, but it's still based on. Is it actually eliminating steeplechase at this point, or are you wanting to get more information? I think Mr. DeFebos asked for a, an opportunity to see what we can work out, maybe somewhere in that neighborhood, and if it's cross street or this different way, but give them an opportunity to, to deal with the neighborhood, because there may be something that we're not looking at from up here, if we'll that's be, all right. We'll be glad yes. to meet and try to work out whatever we can. Maybe just we can right. just approve it as is then. Okay. Despite our best effort, maybe we, the communication was too early or not thorough and not, uh, we'll, we'll try again. Okay. All right. All right. So we're voting on the whole thing we're with the exception of? We're voting on the whole thing and Mr. DeFebo is going to work on trying to Either move We're going to hold the steeplechase in abeyance, and if we don't spend it on steeplechase, we'll find that part of the steeplechase contract that goes to some other part in the city. Mm -hmm. That work. That work. Everybody understands where we are. All right. And let's please go. Please, please call the roll. Waltrip. Yes. Williams. Yes. Denning. Yes. Hill. Yes. Wilkerson. Yes. Municipal Order 2013-29. Municipal Order authorizing and accepting bid number, bid number 2013-21 for police vehicle equipment from Law Enforcement Supply Company of Panama City, Florida in the total amount of $32,858. Second. Motion by Walter and second by Hill, Mr. Fedor. Uh The city just recently uh, purchased uh, eight new police vehicles. Uh, 
I think it's a new generation of police vehicles. Uh, just envision the inside of a police uh, cruiser is almost like a spaceship and you have a center console that holds all the communication gear that requires a certain uh, framework that has to be fabricated and built. And so he went out to bid, this is what this is. This is, this is basically the superstructure to hold all the communication gear. Uh, we had four bidders. Uh, one was a low bidder, significantly lower, but uh, he was, or they were incomplete. So we, w we defaulted to the next uh, lowest bidder, uh, uh, law enforcement supply. Um, Doug, are you still here? If you had a question, uh, Doug is here. Any questions or com comments? Yes, sir. Oh. Please come up to the microphone. On the, Could you, I'm Andy Stoll with Truckers Lighthouse. On the original bid, if and I don't have the information with me, I apologize. I just drove up from Nashville, but the bid had law enforcement supply at forty-two thousand and some change, and then a Truckers Lighthouse at forty-one thousand and some change. I just recently was found, found out that uh, law enforcement supply, there was a deduction of $9,000 for equipment not needed. And I still haven't quite gotten an answer on what that equipment was deducted because I was never uh, contacted about equipment to be deducted. So I'm a little unclear and uh, a little surprised because, um, you know, I've, I've done a lot of bids in my day and have been uh, disqualified in, in many bids. And it seems to me it would be the responsibility of the bidder to bid what is needed, such as the 42,000 that law enforcement supply bid while I bid the 41,000. Uh, so I'm looking for some explanation on that. And I, over the past week, I have tried to get some of that explanation and have been, have been unable to uh, receive that. Uh, Katie, uh, who's over purchasing, will try to explain it to you if that's okay. helpful. To okay. the commission at the same time. Great. Of the three bids that were sort of responsive to this particular um, project, the deduction item that you're noting, um, <coughs> law enforcement supply had actually bid items that we did not request. So they bid additional items, and that was included in that $42,000. When we went back to them and said, well, we aren't specifically looking for these items, and we were able to re um, take those particular items out because they weren't what we specifically requested. They overbid, if you will. Sure. Um, by reducing those uh, items, taking those out, that's where we come down to the $32,000. Uh, we did also have a third bid from L&W emergency equipment that came in at $34,000. So it would have been the second lowest bid after that comparison. Um, and then yours, the Trucker's Lighthouse bid is at $41,000. Um, it's our understanding that there weren't any other, between Trucker's Lighthouse and L&W, those bids were exactly what we asked for. They were not overbid. And so they are now all at the same um, listing of equipment that we're bidding at sure, this point. Sure, sure. And, and my, my question to that is just like, you know, when there's a bid for police cars themselves, uh, competitors are very familiar with what everybody's costs are. So when I see a bid for 42000 and my bid for 41000 law enforcement supply and truckers lighthouse routinely bid on things throughout the southeast on 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 very similar items uh it it uh i guess my question is what items were if you could be specific on what items were overbid on because my recollection and again i couldn't go back and find the bid but my recollection my recollection on the bid was it was very specific it, and and so I'm trying to find out what what items were overbid on and that being said if they were overbid is it the responsibility of the city to correct that or is it the responsibility of the bidder to admit the mistake 
And the fact is, it was a $42,000 bid. Uh, and let me go back and clarify one thing. When I say overbid, they actually bid additional items we did not request. So it's the additional items that we did not request that have been then removed. The city has the opportunity to award um, a bid in whole or a portion thereof. Uh, and so we went back and uh, determined that of the items we specifically requested, that the amount would be the 32000 taking so, out that $9,000 were items that, that the particular company had bid, um, not items that we specifically requested, but thought that, you know, maybe we might want to add those in. Okay. And can you... Yeah. Uh, I, I, I'm questioning along his line. Let, let me understand this. We received the bid. Uh -huh. We received the bid at 42508 we received a bid at 41, 381, and 34, 708. Mm -hmm. All right, the 42,508 overbid some items. They bid additional items we did not request. So we went through and only are awarding for the items that we specifically requested. What, what authority do we have to do that if the bid was received at 42? Uh, we we are taking. We have the we have the ability to award a portion, <coughs> or a, a bid in whole. What we're awarding is that is is exactly what we were, re, had requested. But I didn't bid on that. I overbid and I bid forty two thousand. My, my bid is forty two thousand. City of Bowling <coughs> Green accepted it. Another person bid. 41,000. Are we saying that we took away $9,650 and told the guy, we don't want that, uh, but you got to be it? We do have, and I, mean, I, I don't know the details about this, but <coughs> I'm hearing it for the first time tonight, too. But well, in bidding, uh, but in bidding process, Commissioner, we do have the ability to make administrative clerical changes or corrections and bids basically to the best interest of the city. The way I'm gathering what Katie's saying tonight is when this company bid, you know, we said we want A, B, C, D, and E. They bid A, B, C, D, and E and then added F, G, and H. We didn't ask for F, G, and H. So we basically took those things off their bid because we never asked for them, didn't need them. They just, what, by mistake or whatever they did, they bid them. Didn't impact the bids on what we wanted at all. At least I gather from what right. I'm listening to tonight. So basically, once we eliminate those, and I think we do have the authority to 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 make obvious uh, clerical corrections into bids in the best interest of the city. They bid stuff we didn't need, we didn't ask for, uh, and I think they're right. I think they had the authority when they're going through those bids uh, to deduct those things that we didn't ask for. We don't do that on construction bids, do we? We've corrected errors. On yes, we have corrected errors. On yeah, construction I'm not bids. talking about errors. I'm talking about bids. Well, this may have been. <coughs> let, me, let me give you an example. If you have ten items at a thousand dollars, and their math is incorrect, and, and they put a hundred thousand dollars down there, and it should be ten thousand dollars, we go by unit price. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. We wouldn't award. I mean, we wouldn't take the next. We would. We would correct that mathematical error. And this is a similar situation, I believe. The 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 difference. Because I agree, you, you absolutely, if there's a discrepancy, you always go with unit price. We're not talking about unit price here. We're talking about F, G, and H. And I don't know what F, G, and H is. Right. And I haven't been able to get the answer on what F, G, and H is. I'd be more than happy if there was a discrepancy on some uh, a multiplication area, uh, error, I'd be more than happy to say, Absolutely, let's go with unit price. But if I'm not been, uh, being able to be told what F, G, and H is, and I was not contacted about F, G, and H, how do I know that I didn't bid those items as well? Yes. The, the bids that were considered apples to apples. By removing those items we did not request, from that one bid, it made them all at the same level. They're all apples, if you will. Okay, I'm sorry. Anybody else had a question on in my mind? Yes. 
And just so I'm right, what is the normal process? He had questions. How is that handled? No. It's through open records request, and we have received a request. I believe Marilyn Perrigan has been working yes. with you on providing some additional information. Um, we, we have every intention of providing you the additional information you have requested. Uh, we just haven't had a chance to get that. I'm not sure if your request was submitted yesterday or today. Uh, I believe it was the end of last week, actually. Okay. Um, but we, we have been communicating. Our purchasing agent, Marilyn Perrigan, has been working with the gentleman on providing the information he's requested, and, and we're trying to get that information to you as quickly as we can. But it is not... Um, what you're requesting information on really isn't going to impact the final outcome of these bid prices, if that makes any sense. Any other questions? Any other question I can answer for you tonight? Uh, it, it, so uh, obviously they're they're working to get the information to me mm -hmm. in between the time of right now and the time they get that information to me, uh, what occurs is, is it going to be awarded now? If it is awarded, is that something that can be contested once I do see that information? I guess I'm trying to figure out where, where things lie with that. Well, it's on the agenda for us to vote, and unless it's moved to table, it will go to, to a vote. I don't you, know the process the for contesting. Anyway. I'm sorry. I was the third. Third, yes. According to this uh, sheet, no, I was thirty-four thousand. Sure. Trucker's Lighthouse was forty-one. The low bid was thirty-four. Right, and and then law enforcement was forty-two thousand. So I was the second lowest bidder. If L and W Emergency Equipment bid on everything, and 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 that bid is at thirty-four, absolutely save Bowling Green uh, eight thousand um, dollars. If they did not bid on everything and not did not bid on everything that was specified, then Trucker's Lighthouse is the second lowest bid. So I guess I'm asking for it to be tabled to until more information can be given to me and can be gi given to the commission. Okay. If the commission chooses to do that, then, then they will. But I think Mr. DeFebo's comment to you was that you were the second lowest bid. You wouldn't receive a bid anyway. And and. And I guess, uh, so So do we award it to L&W Equipment? Because we're not awarding it to L&W Equipment. We're awarding it to the... The municipal order is to award the bid number 2013-21 to, to Law Enforcement Supply Company of Panama City, Florida for $32,858, which if I understand Ms. Schaller's comments that those are the same items exact same items that you bid at, and the others bid at uh, uh, L&W would have been about 2,000 higher and you would have been eight or 9,000 higher. Do we have the a right so, to extract line items from any bid? Yes, we can do line item bid as well. Generally, the bids have been written that way in mm -hmm. the police department since 30 well, years ago. Would, uh, would, that, would it make sense for Trucker's Lighthouse to be contacted about items being, line items being extracted from a bid? Um, we're, we're under the model procurement code, uh, so whatever that addresses, and she can provide you that information when, okay. when they answer the questions that you've asked on your open records comments. Okay, okay. thank you. All right, any other questions from the uh, commission? There's a request by uh, a citizen to table it. I'd entertain that if anybody wants to. Hearing none, please call the roll. Waltrip? Yes. Williams? Yes. Denning? Yes. Hill? Yes. Wilkerson? Yes. Municipal Order 2013, number 30. Municipal order authorizing and accepting bid number 2012-43 for health care consultant services from Cheryl Morgan of Covington, Kentucky in the total annual amount of $25,000. So moved. Motion by Walter. Second. Second by Williams. Mr. Febo. Uh At 4 o'clock we had a, a thorough vetting of a discussion uh, concerning uh, the need for a consultant services contract. It was a recommendation of uh, your employee committee 
that uh, we award uh, the consulting services contract to uh, Cheryl Morgan. Um, that is what the uh, municipal order says, and that is our, our recommendation. Any discussion or questions? My only comment would be that uh, my vote will uh, relate to, to the idea that it's the best evaluated bid and not necessarily the lowest cost. Be the only comment I've had. Anyone else? Yes, I'll just state for the citizens that did not watch the work session, um, my vote will be no against this because I do believe the other bid will be saving our taxpayers $6,000, and I would be in favor of receiving the other bid versus Cheryl Morgan. <coughs> no other comments? Please call the roll. Waltrip? Yes. Williams? No. Denning? Yes. Hill? No. Wilkerson? Yes. Municipal Order 2013-31. Municipal Order approving a contract through co cooperative purchase with Conica Minolta Business Solutions, formerly Officeware, of Windsor, Connecticut, under the Kentucky Pricing Contract for the purchase of 10 Conica Minolta copiers in the total amount of $32,399.36. So moved. Second. Motion by Waltrip and second by Hill. Mr. Febo. Many of us who work in the office environment understand and appreciate the importance of uh, copiers, especially copiers that have the ability to uh, scan and email and provide multiple functions. We're here tonight to ask you to approve the purchase of uh, 10 more uh, copiers that will be replacing ones in, in our fleet. Uh, Lynn has used the uh, purchasing contract uh, that's available under Kentucky pricing. Uh, he is here if you have any questions, but his basic argument is that it's state bid price, which means competition has been applied. It provides continuity of uh, equipment from uh, among uh, various copiers, and we have had a history of good service. Lynn, you want to add anything else? Any questions or comments? Please call the roll. Waltrip? Yes. Williams? Yes. Denning? Yes. Hill? Yes. Wilkerson? Yes. We'll skip number seven since it's been pulled from the agenda. Municipal Order 2013, number 33. Municipal Order approving and authorizing the mayor to execute grants of easement and deed with Auburndale Gary Limited Partnership II and Greenwood Plaza LLC related to placement of commercial signs located near the intersection of Campbell Lane and Gary Farms Boulevard and Scottsville Road and Gary Farms Boulevard. So moved. Second. Motion by Waltrip and second by Denning. Mr. Fett. I think these are exciting uh, retail times up along uh, Campbell Lane and Scottsville Road. We've been approached by uh, businesses who want to establish new enterprises there to cooperate in providing easements and sale of property. Uh, Gene's been navigating this along with Bruce to some degree. Uh, and I'll let I'll defer to him to explain it to the commission since it's essentially uh, yes, a legal uh, issue. No, topic of Bruce, we can't get out. Several weeks ago, we did one with this same developer on West Park Drive. We allowed uh, gave an easement to put a uh, sign in the city right away. Not too long after that, we were approached by him again. Uh, and as Mr. Febo said, maybe this is a good thing. Maybe the economy is coming back because apparently there's a lot of interest in uh, in that area now for commercial development. Uh, and the interest uh, basically led to the uh, desire to place two more new signs. Uh, to serve that area, uh, and they came to us requesting if we could again put those signs in the uh, city right away. One of them will be in the median. I'll make sure everybody knows what that median is. If you're going into uh, Gary Farms Boulevard off Scottsville Road, uh, in between where Fridays used to be, hopefully maybe somebody will move into Fridays, uh, where Fridays used to be in a Chevrolet dealership, there's a median there. Uh, and the first quest is to put a sign there in the city right away in the median. If you follow Gary Farms Boulevard on around what makes a left turn and then intersects with uh, Campbell Lane, I think there's a, a dry cleaning place at that location. Uh, what they proposed to do, and I think it would be a good idea, and Public Works was in favor, uh, was to deed the city some land, some additional land, uh, on the side next to where the uh, cleaning, uh, cleaning uh, business is, uh, in case the city ever needs to um, uh, add a turn lane there, we'd have some excess land to do that. You know, if you like me, half time I get up there, and I, if, especially if I'm going straight ahead, I never know which lane I'm supposed to be in until I'm there. 
Uh, so that would give, if we ever need to do a turn lane, we can do that. But in exchange, though, they also wanted us to grant them an easement within that land they're deeding to us for another, a pretty much identical sign to what they're talking about putting in the median there. Um, I think, uh, there, as explained to us, this is for economic development reasons purposes, that the businesses, uh, uh, I think, are requesting these type of signs to help promote it. Uh, everybody, we already talked about Myers. I think this is an important thing to get Myers on board and get them uh, here. Uh, and uh, get by hope that other um, uh, commercial development will follow right behind them. Tad Pardue is here. He sat through a long meeting tonight. Um, uh, he is the attorney for the um, Alderman, I guess, the developers. If you've got any questions, I think he'll be glad to answer them as well. Was that brief enough? No, sir, but thank you. <laughs> <laughs> any comments or questions? Appreciate their giving us a chance to widen that road at some point. Please call the roll. Waltrip? Yes. Williams? Yes. Denning? Yes. Hill? Yes. Wilkerson? Yes. Before we close the meeting, I think Commissioner Denning had a comment or two to make. Thank you, Mayor. I must say that I was a little disappointed when Chief Hawkins and the captain and the FBI agent presented the chief in our police department the recognition that they received something based on the agent saying that this is the first time that a local police department and the chief and others within the department in the United States apprehending and pursuing the two individuals that went to federal prison. For us to not have someone here to take a picture of that event, I think is just terrible. That's all I got to say. All right, thank you. Any other comments before we close the meeting? Uh, our next scheduled meeting is Tuesday, March 5th, 2013, and we'll close this agenda. Thank you for tuning in.